Now that we've seen several methods for classification and regression, I think it's high time that we indulge in a little bit of theory, a little bit of the theory of statistics. And much of the theory of statistics involves what are called estimators. Let's assume, set things up, let's assume that we're, we have some data D, and now before we've been we've been assuming that our data is some fixed non-random thing but now we're going to assume that these X's are random variables just a, a little change in perspective but that will be useful for what we're about to do and the first definition we will need a statistic what is a statistic I think I went through my whole undergraduate when I took undergraduate statistics I think I went through the whole course without ever learning what a statistic is a statistic is a random variable s that is a function of the data that is s equals f of d for some function f that's it, just some function of the data. And note that it is a random variable because the data is random. That's our first definition, and now we're ready for the definition of an estimator. An estimator, estimator, is a, I guess I should say, not exactly a definition more of just terminology here this is terminology it's a statistic intended to approximate a parameter a parameter governing the distribution of the data And we'll see an example. We'll see an example in a minute. But first, I wanted to give you a little notational, a couple notational remarks. Notation. Maybe I'll write that out so it doesn't look like not. Notation. We often use theta hat or something hat to denote an estimator of a parameter theta. So whenever you see something hat, usually it's an estimator. Another notational remark is that we often, well, sometimes it's important to denote the dependence on n here. There is n random variables in our data. And oftentimes we will want to, to make that explicit. So we, so we write theta hat n to emphasize the dependence on n. So it's a function of x1 through xn, and but n could vary. And technically, well, it's sort of a technicality whether you, you consider this a sequence of estimators or a single estimator where the function can take varying amounts of data, but that's sort of a non-important technical distinction. And now, so let's look at what what let's look at an example. Let's make this concrete. Let's look at an example of an estimator. So let's say that that our, our data, our x1 through xn, are just, just a simple normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma squared and their iid. So if we wanted to estimate the mean, the natural choice would be the sample mean. And we might write theta hat to denote that we're estimating, you know, the mean and we use this x with a bar over it often to denote the sample mean which is just the sum from 1 to n of xi divided by 1 over n divided by n just the sample mean and note that this is a random variable I haven't written the explicit dependence on the xi's but in, this is a random variable that is a function of these xi's And that is an estimator of the mean. 
another thing. Now, of course, we might want to estimate the variance. And how would we do that? Well, a natural choice, one choice, would be the sample variance. And I guess I should put the biased sample variance. I'll say what that means in a second. It's 1 over n times the sum of xi minus the sample mean squared. So I'm using this definition here. And that is an estimator of the variance. And there's another estimator of the variance. Well, there's you can take anything you want and call it an estimator. But another estimator which is commonly used is the unbiased sample variance. Sometimes people write s squared. And that is 1 over n minus 1 times the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of the same thing xi minus the sample mean squared. So, you know, if you, you know, as a just something for how to think about this formula or how to remember it, or both of these, I guess, but especially this one, is to think about the formula for the variance itself. So, the variance is just if, if x were distributed, if I put x here also, x is distributed in this way, then it's the expected value of x minus the mean squared. Sometimes people don't put parens here. Maybe just to be clear, I'll put, I'll put a couple extra parens here so you know the square is happening before we take the expectation. And since an expectation can be approximated by a sum or by by a by a an average, then this is a very sort of natural thing. You plug in the the sample mean for mu and you just sort of take the average. So it's a natural thing. So you can re you can remember it by this analogy. And this this indicates or this implies that as I as I mentioned, there's not a unique estimate, and there's no sense in which there is a unique estimator for a given quantity. You could take you could take any old thing, any bizarre function of the data, any statistic, and call it an estimator of the variance or the mean or or, or what whatever. So it's a very broad sort of definition. That's why I called it a terminology. And what does this mean? What, I wrote bias and unbiased. So what is, what's, what's, that, what's that all about? Let's, let's talk about that. So the definition of the bias, the bias of an estimator, let me say, let me call it theta hat, is we sometimes write bias of theta hat to denote the bias, and it is the expected value of theta hat, make that hat clear, minus theta itself, minus the true value. So it's sort of the difference between, well it is, the difference between the mean of your estimator and the true value. And of course, this definition depends on, I mean, you have to see, sort of be clear about what the estimator is estimating in order for this to, so you know what theta to put here. And to explain this bias and unbiased, I think you probably can guess what the next definition is going to be. An estimator, I'll say theta hat again, is an unbiased, or I'll just say is unbiased unbiased if its bias is zero just the most natural thing and otherwise we say that it's it's biased usually you, you don't say it's I mean sometimes you might say it's biased so that's and so you know to justify calling these this you might want to check, and it's a little, it's a simple, it's an easy calculation to check that in fact this one is an, is a biased estimate of the variance, and this one is an unbiased estimate of the variance. 
It's a simple calculation, and I would encourage you, if you haven't already done that, if you don't aren't familiar with that, to just to to do that calculation and verify verify that. And to show you briefly as an illustration how to show that something is unbiased, let's show that the sample mean is unbiased. So example mu hat is unbiased. Let's take the expected value of mu hat and let's see if we get mu. The expected value, well mu hat was just the sample mean. Expectation is linear so it moves through the sum. We get the expected value of each of the xi's. Each of them has mean mu right there. They're identically distributed. So that means this is mu for each of these. And this is a sum from 1 to n. So that's just n mu. The n cancels and we get mu. So that shows that the expected value of mu hat equals mu. And therefore the bias is 0. And therefore it's unbiased. first example and then let me just write what I mentioned before as other examples the first the, the biased I called it the biased sample mean is in fact biased and three the unbiased sample mean is in fact unbiased and I would like for you to prove those prove that as an exercise You'll have to use the fact that these are, or it'll be helpful at least, to use the fact that these are IID. Okay, so this was just a basic, some basic terminology for estimators and statistics and, and biasness and all that good stuff.